Can you feel the excitement? I hope you can. This is some of my favorite stuff to do, and unfortunately, it's going to be a pretty short video. What we're going to do is find the area of regions where there's not one, but two polar curves involved. It's actually really cool stuff. And number one, I want you to just always remember to think geometrically and think simply, like you're in elementary school cutting out area with scissors. We're going to make the calculus do that for us. All right, let's see what I'm talking about here. Find the area of the region inside r equals 3 sine theta. That's this thing but outside r equals 2 minus sine theta. So that would be the area of, well, all of this stuff here, right? So that's all of this. I'll just kind of scribble that in. That's the area inside that, but outside 2 minus sine theta. So how do we get there? Well, the number one thing to do is to draw in radial arms. Very fancy pants verbiage right there. So I'm going to draw those in. So what I notice is that the area that I want starts right here, like if you draw out the radial arm. So I need to know where these two curves intersect, where they cross. And then I'm going to use symmetry and then double everything. But let's first take a look at what's going on here. So I've got an area here. So let's call this like area, all of that area one. And if you notice, area one overlaps everything that we don't want as well. So if you see these sectors, we get a little bit of what we don't want and a lot of bit of what we do want. So I'm going to take the area of the entire piece right there, including what I don't want, and then subtract out this part right here. That'll do it. So first, let's figure out where these two curves intersect. That'll tell me what's going on here and actually technically what's going on over there as well. OK, let's do it. So I'm going to set the two functions equal to each other, like you always do when you want to know when two things intersect. So 3 sine theta equals 2 minus sine theta. We're going to solve that out. You'll add sine theta to both sides. You get 4 sine theta equals 2. And then we get sine theta equal to 1 half. Not so bad. So then from there, we get theta is equal to, well, a little bit of unit circle knowledge. Sine theta is 1 half here and here, right, at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. OK, now why is that important? Well, a couple things. One. This value right here is pi over 2, that's pi over 6, and this is 5 pi over 6. That sets us up with our bounds. So we've now figured out. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, if I find the area of everything minus the area of this part right here, we'll be in good shape. So I'm going to write that out. Area of all minus area of, I'm going to be really fancy here, limicon or limason. That's this part right here. And it's on that same interval, so we'll be good. So there's two ways of doing this. I could take the area of half of everything. So 1 half r squared dr d theta, we know is part of this. And so that's going to be 3 sine theta squared integrated from where they intersect, pi over 6. They'll be sweeping out all the area I want. We don't want this area here. 2 pi over 2, like so. And we're going to subtract from that. You could probably put it, not probably, you could put it all as one integral, but I'm going to do it as two. Pi over 6 to pi over 2, 1 half there, of the limason, one, or 2 minus sine theta squared. Now, that only gives us half the area. That gives us this area right here. So we're going to double each of those. And that's what I'm going to multiply by 2. So that's one way of doing it. And I'll do that with a calculator shortly. Or you could do it, and I'll do this as one integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. You could just sweep out the whole area from here to here. And we're going to do the same exact setup. The area of the circle, which includes the area that we want, it's r squared, minus the area of the limason, which is the area that we don't want, 2 minus sine theta squared. And so that'll give us the whole area. Now, we need a 1 half out there because it's part of our 1 half r squared formula. That'll give us the same answer as well. So I'll be back to you in a jiffy with the answer. And no matter which way you integrate it, we get 5.196. So you've got to love that shoddy video editing right there. As I went to the calculator, it's just not fun watching me plug in numbers. The important part, again, is draw in those radial arms. Either go the entire distance or use symmetry, as we did here. But either way, it was a real basic geometric idea of take out the area we don't want from all of the area. That gives us our value. OK, we're going to do another one, same exact graphs. But this time, we're going to find the area common to both. And this is where I like to say you add the, well, the tracks up. You, you notice where the tracks begin and end. Now, we've already set them equal to each other. We already understand that these two curves intersect 
and I'll draw in those radial lines right there. So these two curves intersect at pi over 6, and then again at 5 pi over 6. Now in this one, you could do it without symmetry, but I'm going to implore you to only do it with symmetry. Why is that? Because to find the area common to both, that's this area right in here. That's what we want. So I'll highlight that just so that we have a, a nice solid image of it. So we want all of this area, every single bit of this. Now this is kind of interesting how to do this. It's a hard way and an easy way. I'm going to show you the easy way. And I love it. So first, notice that the first bit of area is found by taking the integral from 0 out to pi over 6. That's this part here. I'm extending out all those sectors in there. That's the first part of the area. So I'm going to find the area completely bounded only by pi over 6 and the circle. So area of the circle plus area of the limason. And you might be like, wait, what? where's the plus the area of the limason? Well, I'm going to draw that one in a different color. So now, once we get to this point right here at pi over 6, do you see how the new track takes over? So to complete the area, this part right here takes over. So the 2 minus sine theta is the part that we want to find the area of. And we'll stop at pi over 2, and then we'll double our result. So there's two separate integrals here. So I want the area of the circle, and that's going to be the integral from 0, right here, all the way to pi over 6. And that's where this circle leaves off. And I'm not going to put a, well, I guess I'll put a 1 half there. We'll double the whole thing. More on that in a second. And that's going to be 3 sine theta squared. Again, that's the area of that little sliver. Right here. Then from there, we're going to add on this area here. That's plus 1 half. Now we start at pi over 6 because that's where this slice begins. And then we sweep out area until we get to pi over 2. And that gives us half of what we want. So it's the bounds that are the hard part, and the curve that we're now integrating along is 2 minus sine theta squared. That's our new boundary there. Ah, so now from here, when we add them up, we're only going to get the area of half of it. So I take all of this and I double it. And that's it. And I would strongly suggest doing it with symmetry. You could find the area from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of the Lima song, and then the area from 0 to pi over 6 of the circle, and then from 5 pi over 6 to pi, but that's a lot of extra work. I'll be back to you in a jiffy with the answer from my calculator. And that is equal to 1.872 is what I get in my calculator. There we go. That's your final answer. So it's all about the setup. And as a reminder, keep practicing setting up. Draw in those radial arms, and then practice just sketching out little radial arms like this to see what we're sweeping out. Notice where those little arms touch at the end. So these touch only the circle until we get to pi over 6, and then only the limason. That's why I'm adding the circle part to the limason part. In the previous one that we just did, where we found the area between them, the radial arm overlaps the part that we don't want. So we're going to subtract that part from the overall part. And the reason why we can do that in one integral, it was over the same boundaries, whereas in this one, it was over two completely different boundaries of Oh, radiance. All right, that's it. That was fun. I love doing these problems. If you need more help on these or more examples, I got a ton of the exercises. I'll see you there. Peace.